very much, gentlemen. Don't do our jobs for us. Otherwise, we won't be invited back next year. <laughs> SKT starting 2-0 in this best of five series. But this the story of this game is CLG walking in and saying, we think we could have won game one if we had played it cleaner, if we had played it smarter. And SKT stares right back at him, says we're happy to put that to the test. They do that, they come away with the victory here. Yep, the mental and physical warfare. Like we said in the last analyst block, that if I thought if CLG got the same composition again, they would take it. And they could get the same composition again. But as Spawn actually pointed out in our last segment, it was flawed. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the biggest thing that this game taught us was like they had a 3,000 gold lead, I think, at nine minutes. They were yep. playing the lanes for better. They had huge tempo advantage. They were making all the right decisions. And SKT actually got desperate. I mean, they dove a tier two turret and like were trying to take out our CLG members and get pretty aggressive on them. And CLG had the answers, but they still ran into the same roadblocks as the game progressed into the latter stages. Yeah, CLG with this composition, something we didn't see come into play last game because there was this really weird level one. They actually have a really sweet lane swap in, in the sense that Soraka can AOE minions or make tanking more efficient with mm -hmm. the health transfer. Lucian has AOE for minions, Poppy has AOE for minions, which means when you're tanking the minion wave in front of the tower, you can use your spells on the minions, all your auto attacks on the towers. This gives you uh, a quicker lane swap, avoiding the word, the word tempo here because people are tired of hearing it. But yeah, you just, you're more uh, faster paced on your lane swap and it gives you advantages. CLG actually lost a couple of them. Darshan didn't push out some creeps at one point. He got caught basing by Nami. So CLG could have even gotten farther ahead in the lane swap, but they eventually got another boost once they took down that tier two tower uh, in the top lane. Yeah, let's take a look at that yeah. because again, when we look at two players on CLG that we, you know, we hope will take them to the next level, Aphromu and Stix8 yeah. doing work when press, uh, pressuring that tier two in the top lane, also picking up a kill on Duke. The cool thing here is, is the fact that CLG keeps splitting up the map. They do that because they have a teleport in the mid lane. So they're always winning out. This is why they can't really challenge this. This is why Duke doesn't get help from Blank because they're so afraid of who he teleporting in. And they get this dive here onto Duke early and this tower. So CLG played out phase one of the lane swap very well up until mm -hmm. Darshan messed up a little bit. But this phase two or, or three, wherever you want to call it, fantastically yeah. executed. But then everything went wrong. Yeah, which is why I can see why CLG goes back to this team composition again because they get the early game they want this time. They didn't last game. Last game, they got the mid and late game they wanted. They didn't get it this game because SKT learned and adapted the way they played and positioned and warded before all these team fights. And CLG, like getting caught in the 1 3 1, was indicative of the pressure that SKT had on the map and the ward control they had to make those plays. Yeah, and I just want to point out with that replay, like that's uh, SKT playing kind of overly cautious because we're like if Elise is there if he even fakes that Elise is there all of a sudden you have to back away from the trundle because they have a very strong 2v2 but Nidalee's in fog of war that whole time credit to X Smithy one more and uh he just they're always going to play if you can't see them that they're going to be there to counter gank that's what SKT are very good at doing and that was the point though that you were talking about spawn right after that was where they sat at about 3,000 gold lead because they had a turret up and a kill up yeah. over SKT at 10 minutes at 10 minutes but then by the time 17 minutes rolls around, they only have a 1K gold lead. So we actually saw it dwindle in those early stages of the game. And, and a lot of that was due to people getting caught out. We saw Darshan and Huhi multiple times go on great escapes in which, sure, they delayed, you know, the, the amount of time that SKT could get something off the map for it. But in, in that same moment, CLG wasn't making anything else happen And this elsewhere. is the important thing about 131. If you do not push all the waves simultaneously and create a pressure point, you can collapse on one area of it, and it is very hard to escape. And if the lanes aren't in the correct position, then you can't take anything in response. The correct decision there is like, you know, bait a Baron or shove up a mid wave, try and get a turret. But SKT were actually shoving them out and then collapsing on the weak side of the map, which is just, you know, it's unfortunate. Cross has also touched on it. It's just a terminal pick is such a blocker because it, it, it lanes well into both. It's always going to win the solo lane. Which makes one three one. You kind of want at least two matches. At least one goes even. One is winning, yep. so you can then collapse and pincer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come, and that's why we saw these forced engages. The Fisio and Kobe touched on it at the end too. This composition, it can work on paper, but it is extremely difficult to pull off. And this is where I want to address your point, Spawn, about the double melees, the Poppy and the Echo being the two frontliners and pseudo assassins. Uh, with a replay, we see the flank set up by CLG in the mid lane near SKT's tier two inner turret. So look, they get the double pin, so they come in and it actually looks like it's gonna go great. Four members in there, but Faker shoves out Deshaun and then the tidal wave just absolutely destroys their day. So look, if everything is laid, perfectly like yeah. uh Krepo was pointing out if there's a silence field if there's an immediate poppy ultimate sure like that can go 
better, but if you're relying on three people to simultaneously coordinate against the best player in the world, and that is your win condition, I question your win condition very heavily. And the double exhaust that they had in their team composition completely shut Huhi out in multiple fights, not even in just that one yep. when they were able to chain a lot of CC on him. And he tried to adapt too by going Mercury Treads pretty early on in this game, but you could really just see the way SKT adapted to exactly the same team composition with their play in team fights and was just much better the second time around. Yeah, SKT was a lot more ready for these fights. If in an ideal world we get that replay again, we see Flash silence at the four, suddenly they can't flash. Darshan knocks them all up with an instant ulti. Yeah, the Wombo combo is there, but they don't pull it off. But yeah. if you look at SKT, what they were doing, good awareness. Wolf was buffering his exhaust, which means when he was yeah. constantly clicking exhaust onto Huhi, if he uh, R's back, it works, then he cancels the exhaust, buffers it again, because every time, or nearly every time, Hui jumped in with his ultimate, he was already exhausted by the time he landed, and mm -hmm. that's not reactively, you don't have that speed, so that's the beauty. If they were more ready for the team fights, they saw everything coming, and SKT showing why uh, they're the fir favorites, clearly, to take the series. Now, CLG, very little wiggle room with that comp, very little wiggle room in the series. Now, SK Telecom, T1 has brought this series to match point, and CLG need to come out swinging, stay alive in this fight. Game three is coming your way, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.